So Joe is really into the, just the math of yeah. playing basketball, yeah. right? Yeah. So his decision-making about, do I double team this guy? What am I willing to live with defensively? It's based on time and score. And it's based on how the game flow is going. So if his team, and they do a great job of managing turnovers, if his team is manage, managing turnovers. They're getting up the right type of threes. They're getting to the free throw line and they're winning by seven. Well, why would I, why would I double? Because we're, we're, we're managing the shots. We're managing the game. And if you look at OKC, right, they're 28th in defensive rebounding, 28th in offensive rebounding, 28th in rebound percentage overall. So they're not a good rebounding team relative to the rest of the NBA. Well, how do they manage the game? All right. They don't turn the ball over. Right. Number three in turnover percentage. They lead the league in points off of turnovers. So they're turning teams over. They are number three in opponent fast break points. So they're getting back on defense. We're willing to give up extra possessions on the offensive glass. And we're, we want to set our defense. We're not going to allow fast break points. So you combine the, 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 the free throws on the drives. You combine the percentage of makes on drives. You combine the three-point shooting, the good shots, along with we're going to turn people over, we're going to score in transition off of turnovers, and we're not going to allow that on the other end. That mitigates, just mathematically, it mitigates some of the rebounding woes. No, completely. Well, listen, you're going to have to counter, and every team's in that same category. You're going to have to counter whatever your weakness is. You have to counter it with something. You have, you have to find a way to make up for that and offset that. And one way it certainly helps you is being able to, to score at such an efficient rate that you're constantly back balanced defensively to not allow the early stuff. Yeah, you might give up some second shots, and they're going to because of the way that they play, the way that their personnel is set up, like the lack of depth of bigs on that team. That's the way that they're going to be. They're going to be subject to that and vulnerable to that. But the other things that they do prepare them to be able to withstand that. Where on a given night, that's not going to be their undoing. It won't be because they do so many other things well. And I think that's a very smart approach by their coaching staff, something they're going to probably have to address going forward. You've got to shore that up, but they do so many other things well that that's not going to be like their Achilles heel, that that's ultimately what they can't survive. Yes, correct. Now, in a potential matchup with a given team, right, that creates a lot of second chance points that also doesn't turn the ball over, like, again, you have to play this game where you're managing it in a certain way, it potentially could come back against a certain matchup in the playoffs, right? right? Um, I think that there's a certain group of people on NBA Twitter that love Jalen Williams and understand how good Jalen Williams is. Yeah. To the casual fan, and again, I've said this a hundred times, I have nothing against casual fans. I want to be enter entertained too, right? <laughs> I am a casual NFL fan, okay? I don't I don't deep dive on the NFL. It's fine. I love when somebody I'm says- I'm a hardcore NFL fan. I, but I love when somebody says to me, oh no, that such and such linebacker or that safety, like he's <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Right, I'm like, right. oh, okay. Right. Now it yeah, makes I'll sense why that team's so yeah, good. Right. All right, that, it's good. <laughs> I'm, I want to tell you something. Jalen Williams is a star mm -hmm. and because of Chet and, and the season he's having, uh, as a, as a rookie, you know, he's the second year, but as the season he's having as a rookie and some of this Wemby Chet buzz and because of Shea and truthfully, because of some of this off the store, off the court stuff with Giddy, because they are Oklahoma, Oklahoma city and they don't get a ton of nationally televised games to me. And I, I I'm not going to say he's the most underrated or underappreciated. But to me, he just he's the best player that flies under the radar. Yeah. This guy, this guy does a little bit of everything really fucking well. You want to have a fun exercise? Go up and down the top 10, 12 teams in the NBA and start listing, like, I guess what you would label them as a co-star. I think that's a good description of who Jalen Williams is. They clearly have yep. their top star, right? And, and any team in the league, I could say any team in the league, who's their best player? A name is going to immediately jump out of your mouth. I was thinking about this. Out of the 30 teams, there's only a couple where you might have to go, hmm, let me think about that. You're going to say a name immediately, and we're going to say the same name, right? And most people to do this for a living are going to say the same name. So you're talking about that next guy. And so he's a co-star, because I agree with you. First of all, he is a star, because 
how what he has done to develop his game offensively that you can run your offense through him now when Shea's on the bench, put the ball in his hands, and the way that he can now run ball screen and make great decisions and get what he wants. And then he is affecting people on the other end of the floor. It's he's not just out there as like a conscientious defender. Like, oh yeah, you know, he plays hard defensively. No, no. He actually influences outcomes against really good players. So he is doing it on both ends. He's gotten just better and better and better at the polish in his game offensively to where he now he is a legitimate star player. And the, I was just looking at his his splits are incredible. The dude is shooting 58% at home for the season, 50% from the three-point line for the season. Now, why does that matter? Well, they might end up with the number one seed. So he's going to get a lot of home games potentially, right? And, he's re- and look, by the way, his splits on the road aren't bad. But he's really good when they play at home. Like ridiculous shooting numbers when you look at the totality of his game. So I completely agree with you. He is somebody that I think, and I don't even, I don't even know if I'd say the casual NBA fan. I think there are guys that like watch the league every night that I would consider like, man, they really love the NBA. Like they really follow it. They know it. That aren't watching a lot of Oklahoma City games to really understand how far this guy has come. And like what the pecking order is. But if I were to ask you, start listing these co-stars and these other teams, you're, you'd be shocked when you start writing down names and say, man, no, man would I take Jalen Williams over that guy? Whereas like you, like you would think your knee-jerk reaction would be no, because it's going to be a bigger name. It's going to be somebody that's got more accomplishments under their belt, right? All-star appearances or like whatever. And your knee-jerk reaction is going to be, no, no, it's got to be that guy. But when you really break down the nuts and bolts of how they're playing right now, I think you take Jaden Williams over more guys than you think that are in that second seat. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. And he's had some big clutch moments. You know, you talk about the ability to just run offense through him. Like, how important is that going to be in a playoff run? That you have a second guy who legitimately you can run efficient offense through, who can make threes, who can get to the basket, who can make shots from the mid-range, who can make the right reads out of pick and rolls, and also very comfortable playing off of Shea. Yeah. Like there's right. no uh That's a good there's point. there's no butting heads there. Right. 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 It's not my turn, your turn. It's like he's he can oscillate between roles very easily. And it's interesting. I, I hadn't really thought of this. Um, but there I think there's a little bit of a similarity, um, depending on lineups with them, where you could sort of make an argument. Um who like who are you going to hunt? It, 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 similar to Boston, because you have like J- you talk about Jalen Williams defensively. They they have Lou Dort, yeah, right. Who's like yeah, an all all defensive caliber wing defender, right? Shea, who blocks steals for a guard, like he's up there, right? You have Chet, Chet as a rim protector, Casein Wallace yeah. as as a as a guard who's going to fight over screens and get deflections. Kendrick Williams, who's a fucking dog, right? They they have like this ability to put out Ross uh, put out lineups where it's like wh- what's the, what's the matchup right. we're going to hunt cuz even even Giddy is really good positionally as a yeah. team defender like he's not a guy you'd want on an island with an elite level I did see a clip of him as a low guy. man the other day super late on it, a baseline it, it, drive listen, but it happens to you, everybody you could, yeah you could find those <laughs> clips on every single guy in the league have right? you seen by the way have you seen this Instagram or TikTok? I don't even know what it is. I, I came across it on Twitter. The the we done with the '90s thing. Uh-uh. Have you seen uh-uh. that? Uh-uh. Oh my god, it's hilarious. It's first of all, it's objectively it's hilarious, but it's the same thing. This is guy. He's like ch- basically picking and choosing these random clips of you know '90s playoff. What did I watched like other what? Day? Are you talking about like the like know, Jordan the, the had bar, no the Jordan, bar brawls? The Jordan, bar Jordan brawl? had no left hand, so it's a clip oh, of Jordan okay. going left you. where okay. he doesn't finish, or it's like Scotty Pippen shooting an air ball, right, right, right. And it, it's 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 you know very much picking Cherry and choosing picked the worst <laughs> moments of each guy as a player, right? Yeah. Okay. I airballed a layup once, by the way, my rookie year. I'm sure I did. I don't. Remember, it's been too long now, so I don't. I, I'm sure I did. I remember vividly shooting the worst airball of my life against the Miami Heat from the left wing. For some reason, I remember that shot just drifting right on me. It was off by like two feet right, and I didn't shoot many airballs, but I remember that one. Every now and then, I'll have like PTSD. It'll it'll pop up in my head. <sighs> Anyways, I think the Thunder are going to be super fun. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun to watch. Oh yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be fun to break down. It's going to be fun to watch Mark Dagnalt make adjustments within, the, within a series. Um, and I, I think they have enough optionality with their rotation that they can make lineup adjustments depending on who they're 
series matchup is. Hey, what's up, guys? Jack from Jaggy Sports here. Let's take a look at the OKC Thunder. Chet Holmgr Holmgren, SGA, Lou Dort, Jalen Williams, and Josh Giddy. So what do they have all in common? They are the number one seed in the Western Conference, and, you know, Denver Nuggets are a close second, but OKC Thunder are sitting at the top of the Western Conference. Now, what does that mean? I gotta agree. I gotta agree. They don't have that much experience. They're very young. What is that gonna do for them in the playoffs? You know, can they win one series? Because regular season versus playoffs are a completely different thing. Now, who knows, they could do some damage because obviously, as you see, they are doing massive damage in the regular season. You thought they were good last year, right? You thought they were good last year, but look, take a look at now. Take a look at now, their experience this year is off the charts because the way that they're playing, they're annihilating teams right now. But that's, again, that's the regular season. What are they gonna do when it comes to the, to the playoffs, right? Playoffs are a whole different animal. Now, SGA, I don't know if he's gonna be the, the MVP. I, me personally, I think it's between him and Joker. But the fact that he's number one in the Western Conference says everything. SGA took one hell of a leap. I remember when he, uh, was on the Clippers and they traded for him it was kind of like wow you're trading a kid who's up and coming and all of a sudden he turns out to be MVP nominee right I think uh, you know he's rated like a very top in the in the entire league and quite frankly when you have Chet Holmgren and Jalen Williams doing their thing, it's pretty phenomenal what OKC Thunder can do. Now let's take a look at their competition. Their only really competition, oh, I w sorry, I wouldn't say only, right? But their biggest threat in the Western Conference is obviously the Denver Nuggets. Now, I'm not taking a look at the Western Con or the Eastern Conference, I'm just talking about the Western Conference here. If we're only talking about the Western Conference, and if it came down to the Denver Nuggets versus the OKC Thunder, who's going to beat them, right? Is it going to be the Denver Nuggets that beat the OKC Thunder? Are they even going to make it to that round? Are they going to make it to the Western Conference Finals? You know, SGA is young, inexperienced, but he's phenomenal. And he's up, obviously up and coming. Now, is this the year that the only per, the only team that can knock off the Denver Nuggets, hypothetically, if this happens, is it the OKC Thunder, right? You have teams on the horizon, um, too bad for Brandon Ingram, he's out for two weeks, bone contusion, and, you know, it's only two weeks. Luckily, he didn't tear anything and I thought he literally tore something his knee knee buckled like crazy but he, they could have challenged uh the OKC Thunder um you know the Clippers they are not doing well right now but obviously they're not healthy and again this is not the playoffs playoffs are a whole different animal we are less than one month away from the playoffs beginning so you know you got the Sacramento Kings, you got the Dallas Mavericks, you got the uh, the Denver Nuggets, a couple of teams I'm also missing. Um, whoever makes it in the play on play in tournament, the Lakers, the, the Golden State Warriors, all these teams that I'm mentioning have experience. All these teams that I'm mentioning are legit players, are legit teams, and they have the experience, which OKC Denver does not. I think it may be a bit of growing pains if an OKC Thunder does not make it, but at the end of the day, they did fairly well. But you never know, right? O OKC Thunder can surprise us because obviously they've already surprised us in the regular season 
if they can carry that to the to the playoffs, that's pretty phenomenal for them because they hold so many draft picks. This team is going to be quite something years and years from now because of the, the picks that they have, because of Sam Presti's unbelievable uh, trade making ability. You know, what they're doing right now is pretty, pretty damn good. So can they beat those teams that I just mentioned? The one team that um, I want to look out for, and a lot of teams are recognizing that they could be a sleeper team, are the Dallas Mavericks, right? Dallas Mavericks, Luka, Kyrie, Daniel Gafford, um, the list goes on. These guys are not going to go away. Right? They're not going to go away. And quite frankly, they could put on a show in the playoffs. So in the playoffs, is it anybody's ball game? But the Denver Nuggets are still the, obviously the team to beat. Joker, their team has not lost. They've only lost twice since the All-Star game. That's saying something, right? That's actually saying something. So who do you think can beat the uh, Denver Nuggets. Is it the OKC Thunder? Is it the OKC Thunder that have no experience, or, uh, sorry, little experience, and are very young? Can OKC Thunder knock off the defending champions? I'm just talking about uh, OKC Thunder. I'm not talking, uh, I'll get into this in other shows, Dallas Mavericks, Sacramento Kings, other teams like that. But at the end of the day, all I'm asking is how well are the OKC Thunder going to do and can the OKC Thunder knock off the defending champions, the Denver Nuggets? Leave a comment in the comment section. As always, Jag from Jaggy Sports.